consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. What's interesting about this is what catches most people's attention is not the subject. What catches most people's attention is count it all joy, right? I mean, that, that's a phenomenal idea, especially when you read the other, the tag to it, uh, when you uh, are suffering under various trials. Or uh, it calls it temptation, I believe, in the passage. Um, when you encounter various trials or temptations, that's not the subject. Of, that's not his point. That's not his point. Here's his point. It's what he repeats. What word does he repeat? Endure. And while count it all joy is, an, is a wonderful idea, the, what he's after you to understand is that you have to have the faith that produces patient endurance. And when you understand the secret to that in suffering, in all types of different circumstances, it doesn't matter what the various trials are. The code for success is the same. And it's not counted joy. It's to have the faith that produces patient endurance so that you can have the joy. So that you can count it all joy. Right? So you want to pay attention to what, what this, while it's a wonderful idea, count it all joy. You've got to understand how it works in every variety of trials in your life of suffering. And it, the secret is faith produces patient endurance so that you can weather through the storm. And not have joy at the end, but have joy in the journey. It doesn't matter what that boat is going through in that storm. The captain of that boat is what's important to your life. The captain of that boat in that storm of suffering is Lord Jesus Christ. And the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So today we're going to take a look at the subject matter. I want you to have joy in the journey of great suffering. I want you to be able to joy that you can count it all joy. doesn't matter what the test, because you've learned the secret how to go through any trial and testing of your life of suffering. And to be able to make that journey every time with joy. That you can keep a tab on the journey and you can place in your heart the joy of the journey. You don't have to wait to get to the end. Most of us, we don't count it joy until it's over. That's not what he's talking about. It's not what he's talking about at all. So, uh, uh, as we have our word of prayer this morning, I had a call early this morning. Uh, many of you that come to Tuesday night Bible study where we have our special prayer time afterwards, recall that about a few weeks ago, we prayed for Dave Widg Widgens, that's my son-in-law's grandmother, you remember? Uh, well, she passed this morning. So um, pray for that family. She was 95 and, 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 and wonderful health. And uh, you know, when the, Lord, when the Lord knocks, and that's the way it goes. 
So you might pray for that family. She lives on what they call the coast. And so they're journeying out. They'll go out there. Dave will uh, perform the ceremony. And, and that, that was his grandma. So it's going to be tough. Dave, in this last year or so, has lost his dad, his mother, and now his grandmother. And these were all pillars. They were three pillars in his life. And this will be, he'll do a yeoman's job. But it, so you might pray for him this week. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit, the privilege to confess your sins as a priest in the church age under the new covenant. 1 Peter 2, 5 and 9 tell you that. And I'll tell you why that's important as your heads are bowed, your eye closed, is because the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people for spiritual living. You can't study it, nor can you apply it to your life apart from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's why you live in the church age, and that's why... This is a wonderful idea uh, for you to understand that the Holy Spirit is there to take the Word of God into your growth and into your whole frame of reference of how you make choices in your life and to give you the power to perform it, to be able to walk the Word of God out into your life so that you can see the great plan of God and how it works in your life. Now, you can't study the Bible in carnality any more than you can apply it to your life in carnality. And evidence of carnality is personal sin. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. The secret to this is to know that you have to confess it to get back into fellowship with the Father. You didn't lose your relationship when you committed sin, but you did lose your fellowship. You lost the the sanctifying ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. He didn't leave it. He's still there. He's not in control. You need the filling power of the Holy Spirit. When you confess your sins, it brings you back to that place of spirituality. So I ask you to do that before we begin our study so that you can get the maximum out of this hour. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way, both by the automobile and by the Internet, and we pray the same classroom etiquette that is used here is used at home. The Word of God, in order for that still, small voice of the power of the speaking of the Holy Spirit to our lives, is important in Bible study as well as an application. There's enough distractions in our life under normal conditions we need to isolate herself so that we can concentrate for this period of time. Probably no other hour is spent more wisely in your life than right now. Today, Father, we look at how faith produces patient endurance so that we can have the joy in our souls, no matter what we're going through, the joy of the journey. We don't journey alone. We don't journey alone. I will never leave you nor forsake you is the promise given to us. And so we pray for that today, a clar clarity of that in this Bible study in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're in a new series of studies out of the book of James. This we've, I think this is our, maybe our third lesson or so uh, in the, this study. And um, the key word today in our study is the word endurance. Um, this word, it depends on whether it's in the active voice or the passive voice. If it's in the active voice, it's most normally translated patience. Patience. When it's interpreted, when it has the passive voice, you know, you have a, t a tense, a voice. When it's in the voice of the passive or middle, when it's in the passive voice, then it's translated endurance. And what it means is patient, patient endurance. Do you get that? Now, it's important you get that. Because listen to, how he, listen to how he lays this out. He says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter or fall into, I'll explain this in a moment to you, when you encounter various trials, knowing 
a big word for you, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. That's a passive voice. That's why it's this word hupomone is translated endurance because it's in the passive. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and, and it means when it's translated that way, it still has the idea of patience, but now it's patient endurance. Are you with me? That's important you understand that. And let endurance, same word, hupomone, with the same concept, and let that endurance, patient endurance, have its perfect results, result that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Lacking in nothing. That's a whole lot of stuff there. That's a whole lot of stuff in just verse 2, 3, and 4. And so, but we are going to, we are going to stab at this thing to try to get you some idea through it. Remember, that's the word endurance, hupomone. No, I put, I put that word on your paper, hupomone. In the context, it means to, it, it's a reference to, in, in contents of this passage, as well as the context of where he's taking you, means to patiently endure during those times when you, as a spiritually advancing believer, fall into or encounter various trials. This word encounter is, is a compound word. And I, I want you to draw a circle on, on the top of your paper, just a little circle, and put a dot in it. Now, you're familiar with the word peri, right? Peri pateo, walk. You remember I talk about that? And peri, P-E-R-I, and then it's P-I-P-T-O. Probably somewhere on your paper it's there. And when I get there, I'll show it to you. But under point one. Okay, it's probably down at point one. Uh, but put a circle at your paper and put a dot in it. Because this is what, what, this, has a re what, what this is referencing is peri means around. Peri is, the, is a preposition that means around. Okay? And the dot in the middle is the word fall. P-I-P-T-O, peri pateo. Uh, not peripatel, peripepto. And, and it, means, it means to fall into. Now, and you're going to fall into that circle. Here's the circle, and you're going to fall into that. Now, this is going to be a tough thing because that what you're falling into is undeserved suffering. In context, is undeserved suffering. What, what did you fall into? Various trials, Right? So what he's going to show you, no matter what you fall into, I'm going to show you how to have, count it all joy when you've fallen into this various trial. Peri Rasmus. He, he, there's a play on all kinds of words in these th three little verses. So, and, and this is going to be an adversity to most people's way of thinking. What you fell into so let, let's just take one adversity. Let's say quicksand. There, there's a, and all of a sudden, you're, you, you step right into quicksand. Okay? There, so that's what I'm talking about. That parry with that dot in the middle is that you have fallen into or stepped into something over your head. The more you struggle, the worse it gets. All right? And so, here's the lifeline to you. Count it all joy. Is that what he said? That's exactly what he said, right? Listen, what he said. He said, count, con count it or consider it. I like the King James Version of count. Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter or fall into, that's peripepto, when you fall into various trials. Boom. Now, we might call that adversity, right? You might call it that, but you would be wrong because 
God works all things together for good. But you see, the point that he's making is that when you fall into something like quicksand or go take a little swim in the ocean, it's a beautiful day, and you get caught in an undertow, it's pulling you out and you don't know what to do because nobody's told you how to get out from that. The main thing is don't panic and then swim the right way along the coastline. When I was in the north, they taught us how to survive when you fell into ice. We had courses in the school. We had courses before we left for the summer how to get out of undertoes out of, in Lake Michigan. People were drowned every year because they didn't understand you swim parallel to the shore. The point is, when you're there, he says, here's, here's your attitude, count it all joy. Now, if you're an unbeliever, you're ready to walk out of here because that's stupid. And I couldn't tell him how, to, how this could apply to his life because he needs the gospel of Jesus Christ before he can get what I'm going to tell him today. You need to believe, listen to me, you need to believe, if, you're, if, if this makes no sense to you, you need to believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day. You need to get saved. And once you get saved, the Holy Spirit takes up residence, then he can teach you what I'm going to teach you. Because, listen, the word consider it all joy now, listen to me, this is good. See the word count or consider? It's an aorist imperative. It's a hut to command. It's not even a strong suggestion. It's the strongest way to command somebody that there is in the Greek language. An aorist imperative. And he would like you to do this as quickly as you can once you've fallen into the quicksand. Keep your head about you. Spiritually, set your eyes on things above while you're sinking below. What are you doing? You're recalling the word of God. And so he tells you how this works. He says, knowing that the testing of your faith and he changed the word. See, both words deal with testing. The first word that he used, I put on your paper somewhere, the first word he used was perasmas, and the second word he used was dokimas. Let me tell you the difference in these two words before I get into my study, because this is important to you. Per Perosmos, that's a testing, for example, a lawyer. Let me just take a lawyer. He goes to law school. He go, goes to regular, he goes to a four-year college, majoring in law. He has to get through there to go to law school, right? Has to take a, an exam to get into law school. That's perosmos means you got to go to school, you got to pass, you got to have be, be qualify to get into law school. You got to go through four years, I guess. It used to be three, I guess, probably four. Everything's longer today. It takes five years to get a four year education today. Then you're as dumb as a brick. So, so I don't know how all that stuff works. But it used to be you went four, then you went to three. Now it's four years, right? Three, three. Well, the, we hold to some standards, don't we? Then you get out. You can't practice law. Right? You can't practice it. You can teach it, I guess. I guess you could, but you can't practice it. So you have to go through a bar exam, right? If you pass the bar exam, my, my wife worked for a lawyer who, uh, who had an intern she, when she used to work, she worked for this lawyer, she had an intern in there that was going to law school and took that bar four times. In fact, when he went through it, you could only, you could only go through like two or three times and then you couldn't go through it again. 
ch they changed the law. His guy got them to change the law so they could do it before, and he later became a judge. How's that work? Is that not scary? That'd be the guy I got out of major surgery. That would be the guy I got. Well, anyhow, it, Parasmas is going through your four years, going through law school, and qualifying yourself now to Dokimas. Dokimas is the prize. Dokimas is where you're tested and approved out. Now, both of them means to be attested and proved, but one is greater than the other as far as the goal. They're both important. They're both important. But that's a way to understand these two. Now, I want you to read again and keep that illustration in your mind. Consider it all joy, which is a strong command. When, right, when you have encountered, fallen into various trials, knowing that the testing, and this is the one that's dokimas, knowing that the testing of your faith, see, this out here is to get you here so that your faith can patiently endure you through it so that you can get the prize. What is the prize? Well, for him, he's, he can now practice law. For you, listen, knowing that this can produce endurance and that, and that endurance has perfect results, dokimas get you the prize, you get your goal, the goal, which is that you can be perfect, complete. You can be perfect. This word, complete, the second word, the first word is complete, and the second one is another meaning. Perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. That's the goal. See, the goal wasn't to count it joy because you got through it. That was to have going through it because the, your faith produces patient endurance to go through it, what you're getting at the end of it is the results of faith producing patience, endurance, so that God can train you and teach you why you're going through this period of suffering so that it can have a positive results of grace in your life, the grace blessings that you are now perfect, complete, lacking in nothing. Isn't that wonderful? Listen, that's a promise from God. It's a promise from God. A promise from God. On the, on the way to church, I was thinking about this. And I forgot to ask my music guy. So those of you that are very good in music, uh, I remembered, you know, the good thing about music is to your spirit. And you, your, your mind picks up certain things about certain songs and puts it in your spirit because there's a, a ring of truth to it. Do you know what I'm saying to you? I had this in my spirit coming here where I, this line caught me out of an old hymn, and I can't remember what the hymn was, burdened down with, lo with a load of care. Does that, does that ring a bell to anybody? W what's that? Uh, yeah. Well, When I went through my seminary training, I was told never to do what I just did. I was told never to do that because now you'll have a hard time reeling everybody back. What you got? He touched me. Well, thank you, God, that we, <laughs> we, we got that settled. But I, I thought about that. I thought about that. And I thought about 1 Peter, knowing that your faith produces it. I thought about 1 Peter 5, 7, when, I, when, that, when that little part of that hymn touched my spirit about this sermon. I thought about 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Immediately, that, went, that used to be one of the, those scriptures I put in my soul because I need it so often, still do. I still do. So, and uh, 
in, in Psalm 68, 19, it says, the Lord, listen to that. You know how it talks about, you know, in Matthew 6, when he talks about your daily bread, give us this day our daily bread. You remember that? If I say that, you know that, don't you? Well, listen, add this one to that. Add this, add Psalm 68, 19, where it says, the Lord daily bears our burdens. Psalms 68, 19, the Lord daily bears our burdens. The Lord daily bears our burdens. Now, here's point number one. In our lesson, in, our, in verses 2, 3, and 4, there are two commands. You can't see them, but there are two commands. One command goes with verse 2 and 3, and one command goes with verse 4. And by knowing that there are two imperatives, you can divide verses 2 and 3 into one section and verse 4 in another. He gave you two commands. The first command, count or consider, is an aorist imperative. That's a very strong command that's right there. And he gives you this command one time as an explanation for you to know that the testing of your faith produces. Count it all joy when you fall into verse, knowing Knowing, listen, when you fall into that mess, you can count it all joy because what's required of you is to let your faith work patiently to endure you through what you're going through. And you'll, there will be a payoff, so count it joy for there will be a dokimatsu. A dokimas. There will be a dokimas. There will be a payoff on it. Say? Right? You go through law school, you take this exam, and you get to practice law. You, get a, uh, you can hang up your shingle. So I'm trying to break this down because I'm going to tell you, you're going to need this passage. The first division is verse 2 and 3. Count it all joy, my brethren, when. See that word when? See, you're not going to count it all joy. The count it all joy is just out there. It's just a banner in your life. I tell you, fall into quicksand. When, you, when your house goes into a sinkhole and you're in a living room, The banner goes up. And you have to stop screaming bloody murder and get some composure. Because the Lord daily bears your burdens. That's a promise from a father to a child. Does he, has he kept his promises to you? He sent his son to die on a cross. Did he keep that promise? He promised to give you new birth. Did he promise that? Did he do that? Listen, and listen, you could write a book on how God has fulfilled himself to you, had, couldn't you? You could write a book. If you've been saved 20 years, you could. Count it all joy, my brethren. When? When? See, that's the part of that heiress. Here's when the banner goes up, when, you, when your house goes down in a sinkhole and you're in a living room. Then the banner goes up, count it all joy. Well, I don't know. We ask, listen, because faith produces patient endurance, and God will bring you through it, and he'll develop your character in you so that when you come out of it, it don't matter where he drops you the next time, you got it. I got it. Because your life is going to be a whole series of falling into sinkholes. You do know that. Do you not know that by now? 
And the more you're attached to other people, the more it's involved, right? I tell you, one day I was walking, Jane, last year Jane was in the hospital, I was, spent the night with her and was walking out of the hospital that morning. And I met three people before I got to the parking lot that I hadn't seen in a long time. Three people. What are the odds? You know, it was really early in the morning. As soon as they come in and take over, I'm gone. I got to go home, get showered, come, you know, do what I got to do and get back. I got on the elevator and went down to one floor. I had to get off, you know, I had to get off one floor, get on another elevator. It's like, <laughs> I, I stepped off the elevator and I looked at this guy. My brain, you know how your brain goes? And they said, he looked at me and said, Ron Adema. I stuck my hand out and went, yeah. Um, he said, I know, it's been a while. And there was that, I said, what are you here for? And it, it took me way back to the days when I got saved. I knew this guy. In fact, I knew him in the days before I got saved. <laughs> well, what, what are you here for? My wife. My wife's yada, yada. I said to him, come over here. Step aside over here. He said, what you here? I said, my wife. I said, step over here a minute. Let's step away from the elevator. Let's have a word of prayer. He went, mm. I said, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to have prayer. Listen, this is, listen, listen, my friend. This was no accident. I came down this morning, and you did too. Boom. Listen, we're going to have prayer. And so I had a chance to share. He said, well, I heard you went in the ministry. I couldn't believe it. So I'd prayer with him. I go all the way down on the elevator. I get off. I'm walking towards the, where the car is parked. And I, 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 I meet another person still in the hospital. And they go like, Rod Adema. I wasn't even thinking now. I'm still thinking about the guy uh, that I just w went with in my head. That's so another place. And he goes, hey, Rod. I walked right past him. Didn't pay any attention to him. Hey, Rod Adema. I'm like, yeah. I said, what are you doing here? He said, well, my grandmother's in the hospital. I said, come over here. <laughs> We're going to have word of prayer. I go out to find my car. And, you know, and I, I forgot where I parked. Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> I couldn't remember. You know, you got to, all these floors. I thought, did I? No, I drove a long way down. But was I on? B, C. Well, I thought I'll take a chance and maybe it'll, I'll get on the elevator. Maybe it'll ring a bell. And so I get off on a floor. I'm looking around. It doesn't look like the right color. Thank God they put these things in color. And the color didn't ring a bell. And I heard somebody say, is that you, Ron Adema? And I went, how is this possible? It's not even 8 o'clock. I said, get over here. <laughs> Did you see a brown Honda anywhere up here? <laughs> so, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm saying that this is how the Lord works in your life. Maybe not just exactly that way, but I mean, can you count it all joy? Can you, can, can you let your faith produce in you? Can you let your faith produce in you patient endurance because there's a payoff? there will be a pay, not only a payoff in your own character being developed, like in Romans, the fifth chapter, oh, put it down on your paper, Romans, the fifth chapter, and you read how this is going to develop your personal character. 
And you know what? I, when I got on there, I was just in prayer. When I got on the elevator, I left Jane's room. I was just in prayer about her situation. You know, you just hate to see somebody at a certain age get pneumonia, and she had it really bad. And I just thought, oh, Lord, mm -mm. my head was another place. And listen, by the time I got to my car, I, I went, Lord, what, what was wrong with you, Lord? You got all of this. What is wrong with me? I mean, you, you got all of this on it. I mean, he just showed me I'm on way down on the elevator to go to my car. I got this, Ron. Get your head, get your head out of that and get it into what, my, get it into where I want it. And that was quite a, that was quite an experience for me. It was quite of an experience because I was going through what I'm teaching you today. I was walking this out in my life the same way. This word encounter is the word peripepto. Notice it's an aorist active subjunctive. I wrote it down in your paper. And, and it goes along with that command. That aorist tense connects you to win and connects you to the other aorist. So that when you fall, when you're in that house and that house is going down in a sinkhole, the banner goes up and you go like, I got it, Lord. I, I, I'm all right with this. Because I know the Lord, the Lord will daily bear my burdens. And I'm going to put my faith in that. I'm going to put my faith in that. And listen, there, there will be. If there's a per, perosmos, there will be a dokimos. Aren't you glad you came today? <laughs> uh, can you, some guy in China sitting there going, Jojo walk, she, she, wawa. Did he just say, or something like that? You didn't know I could speak. You say, you must speak another language because I don't hear you with English much. So, so we have that. And then the word knowing. See, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, perasmas, knowing, ganasco. And, and that's a present tense which means you got to get your mind, you got to get your, uh, Colossians 3, 1, you got to get your mind in the things of God and not on the things that you think are going to rearrange your whole life in ways that you're uncomfortable with. See, that's why you count it all joy because he's not going to rearrange your life that you're not going to be comfortable with. The important thing is to be com with, comfortable with God no matter how he's changing your life. Because you do, you do know he's going to change your life, don't you? Think how he's changed it already. Kidding me? Knowing that the testing of dokimas of your faith produces endurance. And then he goes on to tell you the blessings that will come from it. The blessings that will come from it. Notice that your knowing is associated with your faith of Romans 10, 17. And that's what produces patient endurance and the joy and the blessings that come from it. How do I know that's undeserved suffering? Because of verse 1. Look at verse 1. Who is he writing to? The 12 tribes of Israel, right? It's a way of stating that. I talked about that earlier. And what are they going through? Trials. Right? Trials. Yeah, they're going through trials. They're, they're under persecution right now. They're not. That's a good point, uh, Calvin, but they won't hit the fifth until a few years. But they are going through. They're being persecuted. And a good example of that would be Saul of Tarsus, right? Persecuting. Persecuting. And, and we're told in 1 Peter 4.15, if anyone suffers as a Christian... He is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify in this name. At point four, there's a second command. Here's the second command. And let endurance have. The endurance that come out of two and three. That endurance that's now working, right? Faith is producing it, right? We just saw it in three. Faith, knowing that faith is producing endurance... The endurance that is at work <laughs> is bringing it to, to a head, to a, a settlement, a solution. Notice that. 
let endurance have, that's a present active imperative, keep it active. Let this work you all the way. This journey has a, a closure. Work it all the way to closure. Let endurance, it, it doesn't sound like an imperative, but it's an imperative. <coughs> Let endurance <coughs> have perfect results. That's teleos. Works. Work. So that you may be, no, watch this, he comes back to this perfect works. He comes back to perfect, that perfect work being perfect. See, teleos means something that's come to an end. Now, listen to me. I'm telling you what teleos. Teleos means you've reached your goal. You've come to the end of whatever, whatever it was going on. You've, the person goes through. He passes his law degree. Now he, he's a dokimas. He, he, he can practice law. And there are rewards for him, right? There's a reward for all of that you've gone through. There's rewards to that. In practice, you've reached your goal. The goal of the educational journey to get you to here. All the different testing and, and trials and, and everything to get here. Now you're there. See, that's at teleos. That's at teleos. And that's really important. Now, look at the second word, complete. Now, see, the word, first word means complete, but this is a whole different word. It has a completely different meaning. This is made up of two words, holos, which is where you get holistic medicine from, and then the word uh, kairos, which, uh, uh, kaleros, which is the word for part. And, and it, it has a reference to being healthy in every aspect of the Christian life. For example... It doesn't, 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Did I put that on your paper? No? Then what should you do? Yes, you write it down. Because here's what this means. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, being healthy in your body, soul, and spirit. Right? We're a trichotomous person. Body, soul, and spirit. As a Christian, God wants you in holistic, spiritual holistic would be that you're sound in your body, sound in your spirit, and sound in your soul. And, and listen, that's not based on what a medical doctor says. It's what on God says. You understand that? It's, it's health based on what he determines. You know, if you want to know if you want to know how healthy your soul is, you don't go to a psychiatrist. You go to, the, you go to God. Because we're talking about spiritual. We're not talking about emotional or mental. Even though it involves the soul. We're talking about, if we're talking about the soul, we're talking about solid in every aperture. Self-conscious, conscience, mentality, volition, emotion. If we're talking about the body, we're talking about the whole structure of the body. When we're talking about the spirit, we're talking about a structure. And with this word is used, it is used here in, in going through this trial that you, will, that you will be sound in every aspect of your soul. Because this is where this warfare is going on, right? I mean, you might be suffering out here, but you're struggling in here, right? So this is a, a unique word here. And then, it, and then there's two other words here. Uh, lepo. Lepo means to lack. And then you have the phrase in nothing. You know what lack is? Listen to me what a lack is. A doctrinally. A lack is a need. You understand? Well, I lack a little bit to be able to buy bread. I lack a little bit to get a pair of shoes. I lack a little bit to get a coat because it's cold. A lack. Now, when you go through suffering, 
there's a lot of lacks. So how did he summarize it for you? There, do, you do you understand? There, there could be a lot of lacks, right, going through. Uh, 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 story of Job, did he go through a lot of lacks in it? Okay. So the, you are going to go through these kind of experiences. I lack a little this. I lack a little that. I lack a little gas to get. I lack a little this. I lack a little that. I lack a little, right? So he's told you two things now. He's told you, count it all joy. Listen to me. And he's told you that you will lack in what? Let's say it again. Lack in nothing. You know why? Because he meets all your needs. Does he not? Is that not Philippians 4.19? Lack, lack in nothing. And see, when you know that going through, when you go know going through, whether it's that, whether it's that job or, or, or whatever, health or whatever that is, your marriage, whatever that is, you can apply this formula. You can count it all joy. You knowing that your faith produces patient endurance because God carries the load. Will he not carry the load? Listen, you carry faith. He carries the load. I just said that. that. I just told you that. You carry the faith. He carries the load. The Lord daily bears the burden. If you're carrying it, it's because you've chose to do it, and that's a bad choice because you have 1 Peter 5, 7 that says, cast it on him. You do know he's a burden-carrying Savior, don't you? I know you, you would, you, I know you're saying, why didn't you tell me this a year ago? Well, neither one of us were ready. I mean, I can only tell you what I'm ready to tell you today. But what a wonderful idea this is. What do I, did you notice that divine reward for faith working patient endurance through undeserved suffering? Did you notice there was a payoff? He gave you three. He gave you perfect sound in every part of your life and lacking in nothing. Well, I just blew through point one, didn't I? I just yeah, I went right through that point. Well, we'll see what the Lord has next week. Because I went as far into that as I can get today. Let's have a word of prayer. The men will take the offering. Remember this month, pray for your missionaries on the foreign field. Uh, we have three that we personally support. And you're familiar with the Sextons, the Morgans, and the Williams. They have their families on the field. And this is our month to send them a, a wonderful donation. Uh, let me tell you, a dollar on the field goes so much farther than you can possibly imagine. So I don't care if you, if you there's some little envelopes back there. Take an envelope with you. Pray over it. Put some in it. Put it in the offertory plate. This month, let me tell you, a dollar goes a long way on the field. And uh, I want everybody to contribute. I don't care if you put a penny in it. I want you to be actively engaged in support. And let me tell you, whatever God puts in your heart to do it will be just as important as anything. So I don't, it's never the amount. It's the mental attitude. It's the desire of your heart. Has got nothing to do with money. We just send that there to help support these wonderful people that uproot themselves and take their families to foreign places and do great ministry. Father, we're so thankful today for these that have been so attentive in our study here in the auditorium. And I pray, Father, the Holy Spirit would minister the truth from it. Teach us, Father, we're going to go through suffering. There is no way. 
undeserved suffering. I mean, if you live for Jesus Christ, you will be persecuted. You will be persecuted. And, and, and a multiple different, various kinds of ways. And we'll carry that father with a badge of honor. We will count it all joy. We will let our faith work, patient endurance to run the race that's been set before us and finish the course, finish the race. We will fight that good fight of faith in the midst of it. And we'll see how faithful and wonderfully you bless us. And we will be better for it. We will be more complete than when we started. We will be more sound in every aspect of our life. And once again, you will have proved to us that we lacked in nothing. Oh, what a wonderful God you are. What a wonderful God. It amazes me, Father, how much you love us. It amazes me. Be with the people and the this study, both here and on the internet. May they grasp it. We'll talk more about it in the days to come, but they need to grasp it. Take this offering that we offer, Father, that we send to our missionaries this month to support their ministries. We have so much and they have so little and they do so much with so little. It's beyond our understanding. Makes be a part of that. In Jesus' name, amen.